Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you like this episode, please remember to hit the like button and leave a comment or two. Then subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications of whenever we release new videos. Also, please remember to share them to your social media. Welcome back to Scary Bear Attacks. Today's episode takes us back to Montana, to a remote area 49 miles west of the small town of Augusta. This area has rugged mountains and is a favorite place to hunt for locals. The peaks here stretch to around 8,000 feet high and are the eastern slope of the Rocky Mountains. The valleys are packed full of stands of pine, fir, and larch and aspen trees. Willow and dogwood bushes crowd the banks of every body of water here, providing shelter for white-tailed deer, elk, and moose. The dominant predators in this area include wolves, coyotes, cougars, black bears, as well as brown bears. It is in this remote and pristine setting that our episode takes place today. On October 22nd of 1956, 29-year-old Kenneth Scott and his brother Donald were elk hunting. Along with the brothers were their friends, Vic Squires and 23-year-old Morris Embleton, plus five others. The men were all from the nearby town of Fort Benton, which is a small farming town about an hour by automobile to the east. The men were all farmers and enjoyed venturing into the woods for hunting trips each year, and this year was no different. In this era, many men had just returned from World War II while others were fighting in Korea. Overall, people in general had a higher aptitude and familiarity with firearms than we do today. Hunting was much more common, though equipment was more primitive than equipment used today. There were not many high-powered scopes on hunting rifles so hunters used open or iron sights which allowed snap shots or shots quickly fired at a target, like done when shooting with a shotgun. This skill is key to a close confrontation with any dangerous predator. Kenneth, Donald, and Vic were out hunting while the other five members of their party were hunting in a different location. It is common for hunters to split their hunting party if large enough to cover more habitat and gather information for the party as a whole. Hunters will bring back information regarding game sign and locations to plan their next hunts. As the three men looked for elk sign and worked their way around a hillside, an enormous grizzly bear surprised them. Vic was the closest to the grizzly when it appeared from the brush. Before Vic could completely process the predicament he was in, the bear immediately focused its attack on him and sped toward him. He was flooded with thoughts like images flashing through his mind on what to do. He felt like running away, but somehow managed to control his reactions. Vic was terrified and immediately began to back up to put space between him and the bear. As he stepped backward, he tripped over some brush and fell onto his back. Kenneth and Donald were stunned by the appearance of the bear and watched their friend in horror as the bear closed in on Vic. They could see the bear clamp its jaws on his logging boot at his ankle as he lay on his back and drag him a few feet with a single toss of its head. Vic yelled out in pain, and as he kicked at the bear with his other leg, the bear swatted his foot, driving one of its claws completely through his logging boot and into his foot. Kenneth quickly swung his rifle to his shoulder. He drew down on the grizzly's shoulder and fired his .30-06 rifle and rapidly worked the bolt of his rifle to ready his next. The bear didn't react to his first shot, so he fired again. This time the grizzly spun on its heels and disappeared back into the brush, in a blur of snapping teeth and swaying brush. Donald and Kenneth ran to Vic's side and helped him back to his feet. His injuries were painful, but he could walk, but his knees were shaky from the adrenaline from the lightning attack. The claw that went through his boot gave him a nice gash in his foot, but the bite onto his logging boot somehow didn't give him any serious injuries. The three hunters decided that they couldn't just let the injured bear threaten or injure any other people and decided to follow the blood trail. They followed the tracks and blood trail for four hours before they located the grizzly again. The grizzly had figured out the men were following it and had laid up over its own back trail. When they realized the bear was very close to them, Vic once again was closest and began firing. He was packing a 30-30 hunting rifle and he fired all three shots it was loaded with into the bear. Once Vic started shooting, the bear immediately charged Kenneth. He fired his 30-06 two more times into the bear, then his gun jammed. 
He frantically tried to work the action of his rifle and managed to yell at Donald and Vic to run. The two hunters scattered in a panicked retreat and believed Kenneth was right behind them. After a few moments they found each other again, but they couldn't find Kenneth. They scanned the brush, looking for him, but did not see him. They knew they had to find him to make sure he was safe, but had no idea where the grizzly had gone. With their rifles reloaded and at the ready, they slowly worked their way back around the hill. Near the place they last saw the bear, they found Kenneth severely wounded and crumpled on the ground, bloody and gashed by the bear's claws. Believing the grizzly had fled the scene, they decided to go get the rest of their hunting party and come back for Kenneth. They quickly departed back to camp and returned with several of the other elk hunters. Once the party returned to Kenneth's location, they decided to move him to the creek nearby to use the water to clean his wounds. They began to take care of his numerous wounds and bandage gashes the bear had opened in his flesh during the attack. As they worked on keeping Kenneth alive, the grizzly once again emerged from the brush and ambushed the hunters. Twenty-three-year-old Morris Embleton shouldered his hunting rifle and fired it, striking the bear in the neck. The bear was visibly staggered by the impact of his first shot, but Morris worked his action and fired again, dropping the bear for the last time. The bear lay dead only ten feet from the elk hunters after being shot seven times by high-powered hunting rifles, after ambushing them three times. The hunters managed to get Kenneth out and take him to the hospital. Unfortunately, his injuries were too serious, and just nine hours after the attack, his life slipped away. After reviewing the details of this attack, I have a few questions for you. Do you think if Kenneth hadn't fired the first two shots from his .30-06 that the bear may have left without injuring Vic? Do you think that the seven shots fired by the hunters were not placed in fatal areas of the grizzly's body? Do you think this bear was fueled by rage to stay alive despite its injuries? Do you think you would have pursued the wounded bear after it bit your ankle like Vic did? I will enjoy reading and answering your comments, so please post them in the comment section below and let's talk about it. Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you've enjoyed this episode, please consider clicking on the like button and clicking on the bell icon. It will help you know when we post our new episodes. Posting our video links to your social media profiles furthers awareness, and it's fun. We slashed our prices in our merch store, linked below. So check out the bargains there while you shop. As a member of our human community, remember to adventure bravely and be careful out there, especially in bear country.